Uh, we also have $50 <laughs> from uh, Casual Trash. He says, hello, I'm a longtime fan, but this is my first year actually here. What a great community. Good luck to all the runners and doctors. And without further ado, I'm going to kick things off over to Epic with Hagane. All right, so this is going to be Hagane. I have Omni Gamer here on the couch who will be doing the majority of the commentary. Uh, uh, he's actually the reason I started playing the game, so I'm, I'm glad he's here. <laughs> you flatter me. But uh, yeah, this is, this is Hagane and it will get your fill of robot ninja action for the day. Epic's gonna put on a great show, and, but there's a lot to go over, so I'm probably gonna be talking for quite a bit. Um, but yeah, whenever Epic is ready, I think we can get this rolling. All right, so uh, three, two, one, go. All right. So a couple things to note here. At the very beginning, he's going to go through some very specific steps just so he can try and set up the random number generator in a specific way. And this is something that you can do early on. There's a number of things that advance the RNG, and we kind of know what they all are. But uh, after stage one, you kind of lose track of that, and it's really hard to control. What he's going to try and do is set up so that he can get one blue flame drop and three bombs. And the blue flame basically adds an extra HP point at the top. You can see it's right in the center. And the bombs are, well, useful in a variety of circumstances. But for the most part, uh, these are very rare items. We're talking uh, like one in 64 for the blue flame and about one in 32 for each of the bombs. So to be able to manipulate so many of them so early on is really important later on. So there we go. Got the three, got the blue flame, and now he's kind of set for moving on through the rest of these. Uh, just a little bit about this game. There's a lot that you kind of don't uh, realize when you first jump into it. And this is a game that likes to teach through uh, some tough love, I, I like to say. When you're going through these first couple stages, you will die a lot. And that's just so you can kind of learn the system. Once you're actually able to get through the system very well, uh, the rest of the stages become a lot less challenging. Um, but certainly, this is still one of the more challenging games overall. All right, this particular setup you see him doing, the flashing is what we refer to as tumbles. And this is a special attack that you kind of get. He got an, a spare bomb on that too, so it's yeah, actually great. Um, and each tumble sets up uh, a special attack. But first, this skip. So there's an entire portion of the stage off to the right. You just skip right over that by bouncing on that worm. That's honestly one of my favorite tricks. Uh, just, one of the special things about being able to bounce is that if you just hold the button, you go higher, and this is something that they didn't quite anticipate being used to get around places that uh, should be normally out of reach. Uh, this is... Oh. <laughs> he got a little too carried away. Uh, this, yeah. is an, this is an auto-scroller, um, and there's really not a whole lot to it, but unfortunately that death will be a little costly into the next stage just because he does lose his blue flame. He keeps his bombs though, so that's fine. Um, and since it is an auto-scroller, we have a, a penchant for just going at it however we can, anything to make it amusing. So you're gonna see him staying a lot more close to the front of the screen, because why not? We know when's coming. This is a long jump which you can either bounce off the right side of the screen or head straight over. Uh, you need to do something, and if you don't know that that's coming up, well, <laughs> you, good luck. Moving on into our first boss. So this is another setup where we're trying to get up a very specific timing to make sure that we can take out uh, how he moves. And what you want to be able to do is set up this vertical kick, which is a third tumble move. It is very hard to hit with, but uh, overall, it does the most damage in the game by far. I'll give some examples of that soon. Uh -oh. So we missed the setup there, but we were able to follow it up just fine. And that boss is one of the more tricky ones just because you do need to get a very specific timing and positioning for each of those vertical kicks. The point of doing each tumble, there's a set of moves that you can do out of it, either by pressing jump or attack, and there's 
different damages, different ways that they go. Knowing when and how to use those is really important, but for the most part, you're going to be seeing us try to set up a vertical kick every time we can. A vertical kick does 25 damage. And just to, to let you know, uh-oh. Okay, so yeah. Um, 25 damage, the next highest damaging move in the game is seven. So that's a huge amount that you can just knock off right away, so long as you actually know the timing for working it in. There we go. So this is one of the more difficult stages, because um, you need to get through with a specific timing, and he chose to wait there because the blocks hadn't quite fallen. These blocks fall on a global timer, and he actually got there a little too fast, so we needed to wait it out. All right, opt for the extra health pickup, which is a good call, because he's going to need pretty much all the health that he can coming up through here. Okay. He did get a blue flame at some point. That might have been a lucky drop. All right. There's a quicker way you can get through this, but he's taking the safer route for now, which is the good call. Um, if you mess up a little bit, you can get caught up in those, and it can really just ruin your day, and you really don't want to have to redo that stage. One of the good things about this game is just you have so many movement options available to you. So you've got this slide, you've got this tumble in the air, um, and the tumble actually bounces around, which is what you'll see getting through quite a bit of this stage. But through the variety of mini-bosses and other things, you also get those tumble attacks, and they're quite good. Um, okay, that was, that was another safety move. Ooh, going for a very tricky strat. You bounce off that guy's head, you wind up on the top, and you can actually just barely make it on top of one of these. But this climb is honestly one of my favorite uh, things to just practice out. Yeah, it's a tough one to do. Yeah. All right, so this is second boss, Jusodama. And it's really annoying. This is the first RNG boss in the game. So you have a one in four chance of him doing the perfect pattern for you to take him out in the first cycle here. Otherwise, you could be stuck. So we'll see what he gives him. Okay, yeah, so this is this is not the right pattern. Um, basically, he's only vulnerable when he drops his core. And right now, he's in a really bad position, actually. This is... Yeah, I might not get the first cycle. Yeah, you're not going to be able fine. to get the cycle. But he will open up on every fourth one regardless. So right after this laser cycle, he's going to drop down again. And this should be uh, a kill since he was able to get off the... Uh, vertical kick on the first one. There we go. So that's Juice Odama. So not great luck, but it, it could have been worse, much worse. Yeah. It, the main thing is that you do get him in that first four. Uh, if, unfortunately, if you're doing full hardcore runs of this, you expect and kind of need a first drop immediately. And that's just one of the th things of running this game. And sadly, he's not the only boss who's like that. Moving on to stage three, things get really busy. Um, <laughs> This first stage just kind of shows off some of the, the new patterns, but there's one thing you want to pay attention to in just a moment, and that's setting up this cutscene skip. So there is a bit of a motion where he'd basically be walking, and instead you can set up tumbles ahead of time so that you fall directly when that first floor block explodes rather than having to wait through. This is probably the most technical stage to get through. There's a lot going on that you really have to time and space well. Okay. Yeah, so he made a judgment call there. Normally what you can try to do is go up the left side. You can bounce off the wall and just barely catch, but uh, he's opting to go out of his way just to pick up some of these spare bonus. And this is to put him in better shape going in. So he's got the full five in the blue flame. He's got an extra bomb, which will help out coming up. And he can still continue to get through the rest of the stage. Because otherwise, the normal plan for this is you get through, you have one health left, you take out the boss uh, in a pretty precarious uh, condition, and you're going to be low on bombs in the end, too. So this one, robot arms, you have to space this really tightly, just because you have a very narrow window where they're actually low enough that you can hit them with the vertical kick, and then you have this uh, conveyor yeah, belt conveyor on the bottom. Belt. It can constantly just messes up your position. He did another very slight cutscene skip there, but you could not tell whatsoever. For whatever reason, if you move uh, with a tumble, just as the screen starts to scroll, you save a second in time that would normally just be blackness. So now we've got mode seven. Uh, I can stop talking about uh, some of the other gameplay mechanics of this and talk about the game itself. 
Um, Akane is an awesome game, but most of you have probably never played it or heard of it. Uh, and if you have heard of it, you've probably either heard about how hard it is or how rare it is. And this is among the rarest and most expensive Super Nintendo games. Uh, the reason for that is this was only released in the US as a blockbuster exclusive. And I think uh, Epic's actually playing the Japanese version, yes. which is a little easier to come by, but still quite expensive nowadays, if I remember right. Um, but yeah, it was only available in Blockbuster for rent. So you couldn't even just go to a store and, and buy it. So all the copies that are currently available and in distribution came from just kind of after sales at Blockbuster. And um, this was right at the end of the Super Nintendo's life. So um, they used it basically to test the market. The market was already playing Nintendo 64 and PlayStation. <laughs> so um, there wasn't much appetite to bring it further. That said, I am glad that we did get this in the States in some some degree, and it is honestly a really fun game. So these last two stages are basically just icing. So whatever we can get in terms of bombs, again, we've long since been able to manipulate anything. So um, just being able to pick up any extra bombs is going to be helpful because they will um, be used on some of these later bosses, and the strategy changes depending on what you can actually uh, muster in terms of how many bombs you have. All right, so this boss is Jose Ju, and he can be a jerk. He can be a jerk. Hopefully, we'll play along this time. You expect to take a few hits, uh, especially in this opening salvo, but so long as you can keep up the four or five health, and just stick around behind him. Don't go off the top. Okay. <laughs> so he has, he has a chance of just running off the top of the screen, and you cannot hit him then. Um, and just eats up a whole lot of time. All right. Now into stage four. Not a whole lot here. There are some very tight slides to be able to make it under those birds. But otherwise, this is a very straightforward stage, and you meet... Ah, man, I forget the name now, but one of your other rival counterparts, another robotic ninja dude, um, and he gets out of here right quick. That is the power of vertical kicks. Most of these bosses you only see for a very short amount of time. That is simply just because the, the vertical kicks are that powerful relative to their health. Most bosses will have between 25 and 30 HP, so um, it really takes it doesn't take a whole lot more than getting one vertical kick to be able to take him out. This stage is another one that's on a timer, so you do want to make it to that midsection just in time to get on one of those platforms. But after that, it's all just getting straight into the boss, who has some nice audio and visual cues. And that's one of the things that's great about this game, is that you do have visual and audio cues for a lot of different things. So. You might listen to the background music and find the right time to actually start your motions to attack the boss. You might line your, yourself up with something in the background. This is a really cool stage. It's a really long stage if you're playing casually. There's a, an entire lava section that you progress through in the bottom part, but uh, they made some mistakes with the stage design. <laughs> and your grappling hook can get you into a lot of places that you wouldn't otherwise be. There we go, the classy double. That's a, that's a really cool trick where you actually wait for the guy to run off the edge so you can bounce off of his head. It's pretty difficult to actually pull off and get the right spacing and timing for, but Epic pulled it off great there. And, and also got the, the second jump off the follow-on guy. All right. Here's another one that's somewhat manipulated. This boss has four different phases, and each one has a really different mechanic associated with it. You try and line up so that you can manipulate each one, and then be able to take it out with that those bombs just for that second phase. And so long as he doesn't appear in a really bad place, you can consistently get those vertical kicks on him. Unfortunately, behind that tree, or post, or whatever it is. But yeah, that was a great fight. Went about as good as expected. All right, stage five, this is the final stage. So of course it opens up with just a barrage of enemies. Uh, there's nothing too much going on, but this is where if you aren't already used to the game mechanics, you will definitely struggle. This is among the longest stages. <laughs> just leaving that blue flame in the corner because you're full. Um, 
and there's a lot of mini bosses along the way too. But it also has some of the coolest skips, just because they try a much more narrow stage layout. This is one of the first bosses. You get that initial vertical kick, and he's done. Simple as that. But now we get Doom Train. Doom Train's my favorite. Goodbye, Doom and Train. He's <laughs> nice. He's very excited, but he doesn't get to do a whole lot. Our second, oh, just barely got it. That's a lot. That was great timing. Yeah, that setup works really well. All right, five two. What he's going to hope for is a bounce off of the second enemy here, and depending on which enemy it is, he has to adjust his height. Worked out great there. And yeah, there's a, a done stage. <laughs> Normally, there's a, a small labyrinth of different doors that you go through, but yeah, if you can nail that one, it's great every time. And this guy was not a jerk. There's about a one in eight chance that he would just completely wait and you would not be able to hit him with that first vertical kick, but otherwise everything lines up perfectly. What, what Epic's gonna show here is actually a zip. And there's a very difficult trick that you can do with the grappling hook where you, if you move backwards while using a grapple, you will <laughs> slide all the way through. And that, that is a zip. Uh, most of the time, though, it will just straight up kill you. Uh, it is very difficult to actually use in, in a human-oriented uh, way. But if you check out the task, you can find all manner of silly ways that it gets used and have them zipping around. But uh, we've spent a lot of time looking around for zip setups that would actually save time as long as you got them. And unfortunately, it's just difficult. <laughs> yeah, there's one in that stage, but it only saves two seconds, and yeah. it's really not worth it. Yeah, most likely it will kill you, which is very not worth it. So this is the second big RNG boss of the game. And what we hope to do here, oh, you're doing the flashy dodges here. Um, what we hope for him to do is drop his core off on the left side, and he did. Nice. There it is. That's the one cycle kill. It's entirely dependent on luck. 25% chance for that to happen at all. And you still need to get the setup on top of it. So that was great, great work by Epic to pick that up. All right, final, final boss is just a giant missile with a bunch of faces. And what Epic's going to do is try and damage those lower heads just enough so that he can move on and then use a bomb to take him out the rest of the way. Time. Time. And that's it. That's a gun, eh? Okay. So 16-16 is a, an amazing time for this game, just because, again, you do have both of those bosses that can yeah, cost you anywhere wait. between 8 and 30 seconds worth of, of extra downtime. So, yeah, really well done. I'm happy with that. <laughs> Unfortunate so, death in that all stroller, but... Uh, you're, you're showing off too much swag too early. But yeah, overall, that was a great run. Yeah. Thanks for commenting. Oh, yeah, my Appreciate pleasure. It. it was a great great run, man. And, yeah, so that was that was Hagane. If you'd like to look more into it, I encourage you to scout around, maybe try and find a Japanese copy. Um, if anything else, just give it a try. It's a really challenging but rewarding game. Uh, it's one of those that has a lot of difficulty, but it, when you fail, it is definitely your fault, and you know it. Uh, but you get a lot of satisfaction out of just clearing out the enemies and using all the variety of your kit to take them out. Yeah, I actually, um, I, I did like a tutorial for it on my YouTube as well. So if you want to, if you want to pick it up as a speedrun, then you can uh, search it on YouTube and you should be able to find it pretty easy. All right. And with that, I think we are good. So once again, thank you, Epic. And thank you, Omni. Uh, what a what a good run from a game that is very uh, under known. Um, get caught up on donations here. Uh, we have twenty five dollars from Butters BB. It says always down for SNES blocks. Excited for Cool Spot and Sparkster, and kind of scared and confused that someone is actually running Animaniacs. Also, thanks for the great couch commentary, Omni Gamer, the true dragster master. Uh, we also have 20 from Andrew E, who says, Watching GDQ at work, my productivity suffers, but it sure is entertaining. Money goes to Mega Man X2 Buster only run. 
It's a great incentive, and for those keeping tabs at home on that, uh, we are at $4,675 out of the 25000 that is required for that incentive. And I cannot stress you enough to put towards to see that. It is a very impressive run. Uh, Jumba 232 uh, donates $20 and says, Jumba here, longtime watcher, love the new games I'm being exposed to. Thanks for all you do, GDQ. <clears throat> and we have uh, Akarasi uh, donating $56 and keeping good on the uh, viewer incentive earlier. A uh, dollar per death donation for Super Smash TV for myself and Jack Miss Wedge. Good on ya. We have 50 from Netherlight who says, thank you for the organization and thank you for this incredible marathon. I'm following AGDQ and SGDQ for five years and still impressed by all